Field check number one with prescription tillage technology and chakra manufacturing. In a row, uh, Mike put on four four disc blades on his 12 row planter last spring. He's on 36 inch rows. Uh, what kind of population did 18. you? 18,000. And out here in dry land, we get uh, from um, 12 to 14 inches of rain a year. Okay. This is on, this front one right here is on a row that had regular Kinsey disc blades on. Okay, show us, Rich, what, what you're seeing. Well, the, the regular blades slide and cause compaction. So if you can see the brace roots, instead of going straight down, they've had to go out and find a crack. So they've had to widen. So they've curled and... Yeah, they've yep, curled okay. and had to go out and find right. a track, a crack to get down into the soil. And there's been enough compaction in the soil between the blade sliding and the depth wheels. They both, one action causes a, another reaction, and so it just compounds it. And if you'll notice, you can see how horizontal these roots the are. The roots are. They're coming out and going horizontal with the... Right, instead of going vertical. Going down. Okay. Now, the center roots went ahead and went down, but you can see the population of the center roots. Yeah. But the brace roots that are really sucking up nutrients and moisture are really horizontal and it's tell and some why of it, you're seeing a second set of and, brace roots coming out so the plant's trying to adjust and it's trying to bring out a second set of brace roots to overcome the loss of nutrient uptake and from if you the first set from the first set and if you look at these roots see how horizontal they came out and they're just floating on the top of the soil mm -hmm. down about one to two inches so okay. that's we didn't we've got some major compaction issues Okay, this now the, this was out of a row just behind us where he had yeah. the prescription tillage blades on. This is a PTT blade. This is actually a wheel track. But you can see even in the wheel track, we still had roots going horizontal. Yeah, instead they're going of vertical. down, aren't they? They're going down. And the brace roots on this side of the wheel track have adjusted. And they're out about two inches where some of these brace roots are out somewhere in the neighborhood of Four, four or five inches. Four or five inches. Yep. We still have good vertical penetration versus horizontal, horizontal penetration. And so, even though we were in a wheel track, this plant side, was a lot harder to dig out, too. And this plant was we, a lot harder to dig out. It took us probably another, uh, what, another a minute or two to dig it out of the ground. Right. So, this, this is a wheel track, and we still went vertical yep. with our roots. Now, both are a, in wheel tracks. Right. Both are in wheel tracks. So, you know, when we start getting out of the wheel tracks, and if you look at the root population at the bottom. Oh, yeah. See the difference in the root yeah, population Yeah, let's take it the to bottom. the farm and we'll wash them off, and then we'll look at them again. And then on the STP rows, we had 56 good ears, and, um, yeah, get dig out your... We had 56 good ears, and 34, 36 second ears, and on the standard rows, we had 45 good ears and 28 seconds. Okay, you can show is this, the roots, okay, this compared to this, okay, and how flat this is compared to this, and see there's two inches difference here in root depth, and so that's major, especially when you don't get enough moisture, and how these roots are flat, see they can't penetrate the soil, and how these roots are horizontal, or vertical, these roots are vertical, so they're going down and getting moisture and nutrients, and these roots are horizontal. They can't penetrate the soil because we had major compaction in the row during planting. And then the other thing you want to show is this. The brace roots had to go out and find a crack to get into because the first set didn't suffice versus these roots just went down. And this is a wheel track. This is a wheel track with the STP blade. This is non-wheel track. And this is just a standard blade. So it encompassed most of it without a wheel track. But that's the difference. So if you line them up like so, exactly like so, say so you've got a good two, two and a half inches more in depth and a tremendous amount more of roots. See what we'll do is we'll let them soak overnight. Yeah. And then you can just this 
see that root mass already. So this is ground level. And you see we have a lot more roots down the center. Okay, we went vertical instead of horizontal. We have less roots in the center. Most of our brace roots went horizontal because of compaction from the depth wheels and the blade sliding. So more roots, more uptake. Less roots, less uptake. And you want to say again the difference? Yeah. The difference is that under the STP blade, the roots are uh, vertical. So we've got massive. Yeah, the CSTP blade. Yeah. So with the STP blade, the roots are going down into the soil. They're vertical. Especially the brace roots right here is even a tire track and the roots started finally going down uh, into the soil so they were going vertical and downward the other plant the standard true v blades had so much compaction that the brace roots were staying on top of the soil they couldn't go down they couldn't go vertical they were horizontal we have a lot less a lot less roots in the center of the stock so our root mass in the center is substantially less than this root mass. And this is yield, and this is lesser yield. Perfect. These stocks are prone to drought. Because of the root pattern, the stock is prone to drought, is prone to rootless corn, is prone to wind, uh, wind damage. The deeper you get the roots, the more you get. Every six inches you go down, you gain an inch of moisture. Field check number two is Shaffron Manufacturing. This is the stock that was um, run with regular Kinsey or any just regular OEM disc blades on. As you can see there isn't there's not a lot of root mass in the center of the stock. Uh, we washed the dirt out of it and that's what we've come up with. So a lot of these roots that are coming down they're coming from the brace roots that are shooting out and they're running just uh, horizontally in along the side of the furrow. If you can see that. Now I'm going to pick up the prescription tillage uh, row and you can see the mass of roots they're they're coming out and they're going basically straight down. So we've got you know we've got a, quite a few roots here but they're not they're not big and robust like like these are here. You see how, and so they're going straight down into that. Looking at this from the top side, this plant looks just as good as, as this one over here. But then you, you pull that plant out and you look in from looking at it from below the ground up look at the difference well even on the top of them here yeah this one you can see all of these yeah they're the not they're out, not going in the ground it. where these did they went down in the they were down under the soil you can see yeah this yeah that's another good reason you see this was buried in the soil already uh, you can see where it's yellow. There's wheat straw and stuff from previous crop, but you can see they were in the soil about that deep. You take a look at this one, and they weren't below the soil. There was one in here that, well, not really. You see how green they are? They're above ground. So they come down to the ground, and then they nubbed off. And here's one, here's a couple right here that they're they're hitting the ground and they can't force themselves in it the soil is too hard for them to force themselves in so they're curling up they're pushing that brace root up in the air 
and not letting him go in the ground. So he's, he's throwing out these green roots, they're above ground. And they should be buried in the soil like this one is. See, like these are all buried down underneath soil. Look at the mass of roots coming out of the middle of that. And how hollow this one is. They're laying on basically in the top inch of soil on this plant right here. Look like this is a prescription. Haven't opened anything up. Looks like we got earworms in there. And things. This is in dry land, uh, um, 80 bushel, 80 to 90 bushel uh, wheat straw from the year before that was stripper headed. And I'm going to count the kernels on this. Probably 36 good kernels. Six. 20 around on this one. This is a prescription tillage here. The height of these stalks are about the same. There, well, this one broke off here on top, but if you stretch this up, they're about the same height. Okay, now we'll peel back the ears on, or the ear on this plant, see what it is. Also worms. I don't think there's as many around on this one. I count the kernels. Forty-five, forty-five kernels on this one, and there's. Fourteen around on this one. That's all. Count it again. A ten, twelve, fourteen around. What did I say before? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, there's fourteen around. There was twenty around on this other plant. So. This one's got more kernels, but it's got less rows, so um, six less rows. So, yeah, and I, I, I'll attribute part of this to not having as good a, this one could seek out the nutrients better over here on this plant right here, seek out nutrients better than this plant could. And so just looking at the growing plants, but once you've dug them up, you see the, the difference. Okay. Field check number three with Shaffer Manufacturing in the University of Nebraska. We called Bob Klein from the university to tell him about the STP blades and what we were finding, and he came out with our new county extension agent, Kat Caswell. They selected a third set of samples from the same field. 
As you can see, the root structure of these plants looks similar to the plants in the previous samples. The roots in the row planted with OEM blades had difficulty penetrating the compacted ground and grew along the top of the ground instead of penetrating down deep. The STP blades broke up this compaction, allowing the plants in this row to develop a fuller and deeper root system. The ears on these two corn stalks had about the same numbers of kernels per row. However, the ear from the row planted with STP blades was thicker and had two more rows of kernels than the ear from the OEM row. We worked out the math and found with these figures an 11 bushel per acre advantage to using the STP blades. At $3 corn, this equals a $33 per acre raise. For a 12-row planter needing new blades, it will only take 29 harvested acres to pay for STP blades over standard OEM blades. The STP blades are made with Velota disc metal technology. Some producers are seeing a better wear life on the STP blades as well as a longer life on the larger STP bearing.